Mm. That's drunk. Aerosmith was one of my first favorite bands growing up. I had Permanent Vacation, Pump, and Get a Grip all on cassette, or at least dubbed on cassette, either from my brother or from the radio. They were super popular to the point that they got their own arcade game in 1994 called Revolution X, made by arcade titans Midway, who you obviously know from stuff like Mortal Kombat and NBA Jam. Revolution X, however, was a gallery shooter, complete with a jacked up machine gun you could use, and some cabinets could even support up to three players. This game is fine for what it is, there's a lot of tongue and cheek humor here, and the appearances from the band members is pretty funny, and as you can see, it's a really simple game, just fire at anything that moves. So naturally, like most other Midway arcade games, Revolution X got a bunch of home console ports on PlayStation, Saturn, DOS, Sega Genesis, and Super Nintendo. And I know it goes without saying that most arcade games aren't going to be good on home console, but man, Revolution X is one of the worst I've seen. And that goes for both the Super Nintendo and Sega Genesis editions. Software Creations and Rage Software were the folks that carried this game over. And hey, Software Creations has made some good stuff in the past, like Plock, Equinox, and Ken Griffey Jr. presents Major League Baseball, but with Revolution X they could not have gotten it more wrong. First of all, this is a gallery shooter game where your only option is to use the D-pad on the controller. This game is not compatible with the Super Scope or even the Super Nintendo mouse. And furthermore, the Genesis version isn't compatible with any Sega light guns either. And that's a problem, considering that that's really the only thing you do in this game is just shoot at stuff. The crosshair with the D-pad is so frustratingly inaccurate, it feels really strange because it's almost like its movement has momentum, like you're controlling Mario. When you let go of a direction, the crosshair will keep drifting past your target. Whose idea was this? This is just god-awful execution. Oh, and let's check out that sweet sprite animation. I can't even tell what these things are. Looks like some kind of Lego chainsaw sculpture? You get 25 lives to finish this game, and if you die, you continue right where you left off, making this game insanely forgiving despite the terrible aiming. There's five levels here, and a member of Aerosmith is hidden in each one. Find them all and you get the best ending. If you don't manage to find them all, uh, you just, uh, finish the game anyway, I guess. Your machine gun never runs out of ammo, and your secondary attack is slightly more powerful since it shoots... CDs? Oh, is this what happened to all those AOL-free 60-minute things that came in the mail every other day? You can also upgrade the CDs to laser discs, and man, I would not want to get hit with one of those big-ass things. So how much Aerosmith is actually in this game? Well, it's got five second samples of five different songs. There's Ragdoll, Fever, Eat the Rich, and Dude Looks Like a Lady, as well as an elevator version of Love in an Elevator when you're in an elevator. I will say, at least the story here provides some humor. This gal named Helga leads something called the New Order Nation and kidnaps Aerosmith because they can, I guess. Hey man, when I try and take over the world, watch out Electric Light Orchestra and watch your back, Fog Hat. There's plenty of goofy videos and voice samples throughout, and I mean, it's a game where you shoot everything and everything takes damage, so I guess that's pretty cool. The problem with that, though, is that it causes a ton of slowdown. That is pretty dang frustrating. If you think the Genesis port would make a good alternative, eh, it really doesn't. I mean, it's pretty much the same game, but with worse music and worse sound. I do appreciate you can hold an extra button to change the speed of the crosshair, but this still doesn't come close to the original arcade, and it's still not that great on its own. This is a classic case of something that would have done the job just fine for the time, but playing it now, there's not much point. I will say though, I was kind of surprised playing the original Revolution X arcade game. I was expecting it to be awful, but it's a big bag of cheese. You got Aerosmith, you got these Power Ranger dudes throwing stars at you, you're in the desert, you're in the jungle, why? And who are these guys? What is this, Serious Sam? So yeah, I think the original arcade is a good time for, I don't know, 10 minutes or so until you get bored with it. The Super Nintendo and Sega Genesis home console ports, they were merely adequate at best at the time, which means they're completely outdated now. Stick with the arcade. Alright, I want to thank you for watching, and I hope you have a great rest of your day.